Hey guys and welcome to a quick tip in our Digital Classroom series. And Digital Classroom is made possible by BenQ and Rogue. Now a lot of people ask me like, Frank, how do you get the vintage look in your images? Is it all the lens? Well, I love shooting with vintage lenses, but no, of course it's not all the lens. And I just wanted to show you in this very quick tutorial how I create those looks. And it's, it's very simple to do, and I have to stress that every single image demands something else. So it's not like you create this preset the same way and it will work you really have to change it per image as you should always do now if you're lazy just use it on all your images now this was shot with a 135 leica lens an older lens and what i like is that you can really isolate one person this was shot on a flea market in Kampen, and it's just a snapshot guys this is not something like a serious street photography shot it's just a snapshot but i just wanted to show you and this is on my computer at the moment now the first thing i always will do is just back down the highlights a little bit and raise the shadows and this depends per shot. Now it opens it up a little bit more, so add a little bit of contrast. And now it seems like I'm actually destroying the highlights and shadows again, which I just opened. But by adding a little bit of contrast, you also see that the colors pop a little bit more. You get a little bit more a sense of, well, realness and three-dimensionality. What I like to do is per shot, just add a little bit of clarity. So just zoom in and just add a little bit of clarity. Now I always watch for faces. I don't want those faces to be actually over sharpened or over clarified. And also the background, the bouquet, it has to be nice. So let me just put it on zero and you can see what I mean. And I'll just look at these round areas here. Now, as soon as I start raising it, you will see that at one point, let's overdo it. It becomes really obvious that the faces get really dirty and I, I don't like that part. So often my clarity will be around like the 10 point or some, something very similar to that. Okay, now zoom out again. Now, of course, we want to make that color a little bit like it's not really cross processing, but you can see it's a little bit funky. Now, nowadays, you can, of course, go here into profiles and just select one of the profiles. But let's not do that. Let's just create something from scratch. Now, the thing that I love to do is actually play with that tone curve. So I'll just go here. And of course, you can just play with the tone curve like this and just add a little bit of, of, yeah, of bite to the image. But what, what's way more interesting is actually go into here, use saturation and luminance. Now I can actually say, okay, I want to pop the reds just a little bit. So just saturate the reds, maybe back down on the oranges or maybe just give it a little bit more. And there we go. And you can also change the luminance for red. There we go. And now red just pops a little bit more in the shot, like you can see here. Okay, but now let's go back to the tone curve. Now, of course, you can use the tone curve for contrast, but you can also go here, linear, medium contrast, and strong contrast. So that's one of the options, right? But it becomes way more fun when you press this one and you actually go to channel RGB. Now go to the red channel. And what I like to do is just add a little bit of red to the shadows and just back it down on the highlights. It gives you a little bit of a cooler look. Now go to the blue channel. I often find that I don't use the green channel that much and add a little bit of blue on the shadows. There we go. Sorry. There we go. And add a little bit on the highlights or take it out of the highlights. Maybe in this case, take it out. Gives it a little bit of that yellowish look, what you know from vintage looks, right? Okay. And now, of course, because we use vintage looks, we want to get a little bit of a vignette in. So let's go to vignetting and let's just add a little bit of that corner smoothness. There we go. Now what you can see is that the image really pops. It's a totally different image from the original. And if you like this, which I do, just store this as a preset. So create preset. And now just call it, um, what should we do it? Fday slide vintage. There we go. And just create. Okay, now let's show you before and after. So let's do this settings reset. So this is before, it's okay, 
but this just pops way more. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this little tip on how I create those vintage looks. And well, if you have any questions, leave comments below. And of course, smash that like button if you like it. But most of all, subscribe to our channel and tell other people about it. So please share these videos because that way we can grow the channel for you guys. Hey guys, see you again next time. Bye bye.